Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Uh, it's been a minute since I've been on here. Um, I'm doing pretty good, y'all. Today is, um, let me fix this camera. It's a little funny looking. Um, I can always edit the top off later. Y'all, it's June 21st, 2022. Summer solstice. First day of summer. Um, so how's everybody feeling about that? Um, I know us Southerners down here in Texas, I'm sure a lot of people are like, oh, it's hot. Yeah, it's been here in Houston. It's been up in the hundreds. So, um, feels like, you know, about 115, 111 uh, the other day. Um, but I don't mind it. I actually like the heat, y'all. Um, I like to say I'm part reptile. Well, I mean, we know I am, but, um, I, you know, since whenever I took myself off the sugar, <clears throat> um, my body temperature dropped, um, I, I don't know, probably at least five degrees. So I stay a lot cooler than I, um, I used to. My body regulates its temperatures, temperature better without the sugar. So I stay a lot cooler and I can manage the heat a lot easier. The heat doesn't bother me. Um, the cold bothers me, so I'm, I'm grateful to live in the South and be a Southerner. I'm a proud Southerner. I don't have anything against my Northerners. Y'all are wonderful as well. We all are wonderful. Um, but I'm just, my heart's from the South, so. Um, and I love the heat, you know? So today it's the summer solstice. Um, a day just to let go of all the past caca, you know, like we do every month with our with our new moons, you know, and you can with your full moon too. Um, it's all about intentions, um, you know. But um, summer solstice is, uh, is you know a day to let go of things and maybe light a candle and think about some some things that you want um, to improve on or. Um, you know, some goals you want to reach or something, you know, some dreams. I say goals, not dreams, because dreams seem unreachable, um, but goals are, are reachable. So I hope everybody's doing good today. I, you know, usually I try to rush through this. I'm not really not going to rush today. Um, I do have something I've got to do here afterwards. Um, I've been, my son's been doing um, driver's ed. So he's 17 and so I'm teaching him how to drive and um, we've, we've done one little driving session so far, but um, his father thinks that he likes doing the driver's ed. So I agree and that's what we did with my oldest son and it worked for him. So we put, we're putting my son, my middle son through that, my, my, my middle child, I should say, my youngest son um, through driver's ed. And so I've been real busy with that. Um, you know, I'm having to drive over across town every day and uh, to do that, I don't mind. Um, it's just, it does take, um, you know, several hours out of my day, which is fine. It's, it throws my routine off because I'm such, such a homebody and um, I enjoy my home and my peace and quiet so much, y'all. And um, I used to crave vacations and crave going places all the time. And, you know, now I'm like, I don't could care less um, because I'm just as happy in my own home, my temple, uh, than I am anywhere else. Um, you know, we went to a water park. And it was just, you know, there's people and there's lots of people nowadays. It's not like when I was little back in the 80s. We didn't have a whole lot of people like we did now in 2020. Um, so getting out and going places and dealing with people, a lot of people. It's very stressful for me sometimes. Um, you know, but the thing is, is I can't let other people bother me because the work I do. But the thing is, is it's a double whammy because I'm already a, <clears throat> a, a energy, uh, I work with energy. So therefore I'm very sensitive to energy, but I have to learn to take on that energy and then as they say transmute it into something positive so you know when i'm around people that are full of uh, fear and anxiety and stuff i can feel it and uh, so my job is while i'm there with them is to um take that energy and i pull it in and then i turn it into um something more positive 
um, more radiant, you know, and, and I'm learning as I go along these little things, how to live daily as a magician. And I don't, because I don't want to live as a, um, as I was before, just a, a normal normie, um, sheeple, sheep. I don't, you know, who lives in the world. I don't want to be that person anymore. I want to, um, and I do, I, I eat, sleep, live, pray, my life is magic and God, God and that God, number one, because without God, there's no magic. Um, but because of God, there's magic. And so I'm very grateful for my magic, of course, but I'm grateful for God first, you know? Um, and, and my life has just been, become so peaceful this past, uh, really the past year and a half. Um, I like to say that me and my husband, we've only been back together about a year and a half. That we that our relationship is new. Still, we're still newlyweds. We've only been together. We've been together over 11, but really, we've only been together a year and a half since we awakened together and uh, united as one. And since that, when I realized that that was my twin flame and that God had given him to me um, to teach me things and to teach me forgiveness and to teach me patience, um, you know, and he's ended up being, um, my little, um, angel in disguise, you know, um, we fought off so many demons, you know, literally, literally, um, and I've seen demonic possessions and it's real, you know, demons are real and I haven't done a lot of studying into me and I'm not trying to go and invoke in a bunch of demons. I'm not, I don't want to do that because I've fought my demons already. I've done, my demons were there. I didn't have to invoke no demons, okay? The demons were there in my life. I had to invoke angels to get them out. So why would I go back and invoke demons again? No, 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 no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to study up on demonology and learn about them so I can have more compassion and help them. Um, that's what I want to do. I don't want to, I don't want to invoke them. They're there, but I, I want to learn about them. I'm not going to invoke demons. I invoke angels and I don't even know. I just heard that demons are just the other side of the angel. Like they're, um, you know, like their vices or whatever. So, you know, as I learn more about that, we will talk about that. You know, we, we don't have to get into that right now. Right now, what I've been doing is I've been invoking the single elemental pentagram of earth. And um, at first, because I'm, I'm learning the supreme pentagram ritual. Um, and But of course, I need to do the single elements first. I'm going to do those, you know, probably a month on earth and then a month into air. I believe airs. I know. I'm going to stay on earth and then move into something else next. And I'm not sure. I don't want to speak on it because you never know. Because my... You know, it could change at the last minute because it's God's full of surprises, and, you know. So, um, and I'm also um, doing the greater hexagram rituals um, daily. So, I'm invoking that energy, that planetary energy for that particular day. So, today's Tuesday. So, I would invoke, of course, Mars energy. And so, I've been working with that. I've been doing that for quite some time now. And I'm ready to do the solar hexagram, greater solar hexagram ritual and I'll be doing that soon. I don't rush um, things anymore because it's nonsense. It's a waste of energy uh, because no matter what, everything that I've got is already there. It's mine. It's just unfolding. And so I don't really have to do anything more than what I already do to uh, reach, my, reach my goals in life. And I've spoke on some of those. My goals haven't changed. Um, but it's my pace, uh, my, the, the way that I'm going about reaching my goals has changed and I'm, I'm not rushing things as much. I'm not, I'm letting God do the work. I'm not stressing anything at this point. I'm enjoying life. Um, and I'm working on me still. I'm still working on me. You know, I got, I get, um, I have my own issues. Yeah. Life is good, but you know, I still get, um, I'm working on my patience still, y'all, because I, like I said, um, the world is not a nice place and people aren't very nice nowadays. And so I have to, 
I have to be nice and I have to have compassion and I have to have patience. And that's not always the easy thing, especially knowing the things that I know. So, you know, I, uh, that's why I do this work is to bring more love and compassion into my soul, into my home, into my aura, which then extends out into my family and my friends and, uh, and then my generations to come. My grandbabies, great grandbabies, you know, and Nana's gonna leave a legacy. And, uh, you know, Madre, Mama, you know, and that's what I want everybody to call me, Mom. You know, Mother Earth. Um, that's what he said I was. And so that's what I'm taking on. I'm learning, I'm learning. And so I've been invoking the Earth pentagrams. And oh, let me tell you, I have been so drawn to being outside. I don't even want to be inside. I, um, I've i gotten my plants. I've gotten some plants. on my, my porch looks like a little oasis. That's another thing I was wanting to speak on. Oh, and today I am going to be showing y'all how to do the hexagram ritual. We'll go into that in a minute. But first I wanted to speak on, I was, you know, to tell you a little thing, things I've been doing. And like, I really haven't been too much. Summer started, my daughter's been out. Um, I haven't been out doing too much because we've been trying to save a little money and Lord knows everything's so expensive. And so we were thinking, well, my husband were like, well, we should take a little vacation for our daughter and for us or whatever and the family. And uh, Yeah. So I decided to get on um, Airbnb. I opened an Airbnb account. And I think I've told y'all before that I have a, a record. My last charge was around 10 years ago. It was 2012 when I signed for my time in 2012. And now I didn't finish my probation until 2014. So that would make it eight years if they're going by that. Um, and yes, I do have previous felonies. Um, and I'm not, I don't have to tell you how many, but I have several. Um, but I was young, and they're not, it's not from harming anybody. They're all petty, petty theft, stuff like that, that equaled up to felonies. So anyways, um, I opened the Airbnb account, and we found this beautiful little place where we're going to stay in here, and, and we're just not going far here in Texas, a little staycation, because gas prices, etc. and um, I really wasn't big on going to begin with, but you know, because I'm so happy in my home and I don't need a vacation to make me feel any better. I don't need, I'm so content and happy and just who I am, where I'm at, you know, like vacation for me sounds like a little just added stress. But anyways, so let's do it, babe. You want a vacation? Sure. Okay. We'll take a little vacation. I found it and I actually got excited about it. Woke up the next morning. They wanted a copy of my driver's license. I upload that within a few moment, a couple minutes, I had already gotten an email back. I didn't know that even, I went to sign in to look at some other things that we could do through Airbnb, like kayaking or something. And um, they had signed me out of my account. My account had been shut out. So what they did was they did a background check on me and I didn't know Airbnb did background check. And even if they did, I wouldn't have even thought anything because it's been so long. And I'm thinking what well, you're looking for, um, I don't know, assault charge. I don't know, not looking for things that I've done. You know what I'm saying? Especially that long ago. So anyways, um, yeah, they denied me. They, when they refund, I had put down money and everything. They refunded my money within a couple days um, and shut my account out. So no vacation through Airbnb. Just so you know, for people that ever, if you know, if you have previous felonies or whatever, I don't know. Maybe it was just that particular home. I'm not sure. But this is my thing is God works in mysterious ways. Okay. And um, maybe that would not have been a good place. So I, there was one bad review on there. And, and uh, you know, and I'm not to judge, but hey, God say puts me in position. So he'll end up putting me in a better place. And my vacation will be, you know, five times better than what it previously would have been. Because that's how he works for me. Because that's my faith nowadays. My yeah, at first, I was a little bummed. I'll be admit, I was like, we were going to take a vacation with my neighbors and my friends, neighbors, family, whatever you want to call it. And I was like, ah, I was excited, but that's okay. But then at the same time, I'm like, oh, okay, well, now I don't have to save that money. Like, I was, you know, and I can just kind of live. It's all for a reason. So, um, 
I was just going to tell you a little bit about that, what's kind of going on. But other than that, I've been doing real good. Um, you know, no anxiety. Um, maybe a tiny bit of after that vacation. I do suffer still a little bit of depression sometimes. You know, what I do here and when I awaken and the things that I know are not always easy to hear and to comprehend sometimes. And so it does take a toll, you know. And, you know, sometimes, yeah, I mean, yeah, I wish I had more sometimes. But I'm grateful, y'all. I'm grateful, okay? And I know that God's going to give me everything I need and in, in his time. And he'll give me more than I need in his time. His, his plan is way greater way greater than I could ever, ever imagine, okay? Ever. Um, so, y'all, yeah, let's talk about the hexagram ritual. So, if you've been doing the pentagram ritual, and if you've been doing the middle pillar, then this is going to be what, this is, let me speak, this is what I started doing. Uh, this is how I started doing it. And I think you could throw the rose cross in there maybe beforehand, but I started, this is, I started, hey, Minu, my baby. I started with the pentagram ritual, of course, and I did that for several, several months. Um, and then a little, about nine months into that, I learned the middle pillar, maybe it was about a year, learned the middle pillar, did that for a while. And the hexagram ritual is what I was drawn to next. And then, of course, I used to use your basic Golden Dawn magic book. That's what I've learned. Um, and just use Golden Dawn magic. That's it. And just type it in. You'll see it. It's a beautiful book. And it's um, that's how I've learned my ritual work. I don't... I, that and through spirit. I And yes, I've learned things through YouTube, through uh, mentor Damien Eccles. Um, and I scan through other people to learn things. But me for now, like I, I try to, I don't get any more magic books. I get books to learn other things. But I on my magic books, I have one. And I let spirit guide me and I move slowly, you know, and I don't try to rush anything. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes, you know, but I know because spirits do it telling me, like, I might, I have a thousand percent um, trust, uh, trust line with my angels. And I know that, um, that, that they're teaching me things and, and guiding me and just how they have to this whole process, you know, and if you've seen any of my videos or heard me talk through, I've got about 20 videos, you know, you'll see the process, you know, and I've dropped a bunch of weight and, um, you know, my skin's better. Oh, I've cured my own cancer. <laughs> I forget about that. Y'all, I swear sometimes I have amnesia. I have amnesia because it's hard going 40 years, um, living your life one way and then being told another thing after 40 years of living your life one way and then you've told another thing, it's it's shocking. And so you forget. You forget who you are sometimes and you forget where you come from. So I have to remind myself daily who I am, who I know. <clears throat> and it's not always easy because nobody, I can't talk to people about these things. That's why I make these videos to express, to get these things off my chest because I don't talk to anybody. I don't even... These are things I don't even really talk to my husband about, y'all. Why? Because I don't want to. Because this is not for him. This is for y'all. And this is how this is this is how important this is for y'all, for me and for y'all and for us. And for me to put this out there for y'all. You know, and how much I love y'all. How much I love you. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for y'all. My y'all are my friends. Y'all are my angels. Okay? Remember, call me mama. You know, and I just want to teach y'all. And if you're drawn to this and you got a calling, I promise you, you have a calling. And and the and Papa God is awakening. Papa is awakening everybody. A lot of people right now, our world is not in a good place. Not in a good place. So Madre had to come on down to help. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And, you know, like I said, you can always reach out to me. You know, I've been, I've been checked my emails for my YouTube and see if anybody had any comments, but you can always reach out to me. My email address is Robin Howell, R-O-B-Y-N-H-O-W-E-L-L -L 1121 at gmail.com. You can always email me. Always. All right. And that's my personal email, y'all. You know, I, I'm not scared. I don't carry any fear anymore. 
you know, and that's why I say it's hard for me to get out sometimes and be around people because I, it frustrates me sometimes, but I'm working on me. I'm new to this y'all too. I, I'm, I'm new to this, you know, new to this too. And, um, that, that, again, that's why God put me here and, and, um, and I'm here to help, you know, so reach out to me. Um, so the hexagram ritual is, is now with the pentagram, you've been working with your terrestrial plane. So your hexagram or your microcosm, what you're going to do is you're with your hexagram ritual, you're bringing it on up to the, um, to above, as above, so below. This is as above. This is your celestial realm is what you're working with. And I like to think of myself as the sun when I'm doing the hexagram ritual. And what it is, is it's the sun moving through the constellations. And you know, the sun moves through, say, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, fire, earth, air, water. So that's how you're moving through. That's how the hexagram ritual moves. So when you start off in the east, in the pentagram ritual, you're starting off with what? Air in the east, right? But no, not in the hexagram ritual. The hexagram ritual, you're starting out with fire, okay? Just like the sun would be moving through the constellations because Milky Dell, um, Malky Dale, Aries, is fire. I'm sorry, as sometimes, okay? Then you move into Taurus, which is Asmodel. He's Earth. And then you move on to Gemini, who is air. And then you move on to Muriel, who is Cancer. Amber is his color. And he is water. And then you go on. You see what I'm saying? Because each one stays in that rotation. Okay, and so, but the thing is, is with the hexagram ritual, y'all, it is a little easier, a little bit, it is, no, except where you, when you get to the signs are a little different, but I made, I drew them out, and now my drawings aren't the best, but that's going to help you, um, but other than that, it's one word, so with the pentagram ritual, you know, when you're saying, uh, yod, hey, bob, hey, and, um, Adonai, and, uh, eh, hey, yeah, and Agala. Okay, we don't have to do all that. It's one word for all four sides. Okay. And it's Ararita. Now that is short for, because, sorry, uh, and I'm going to try to say this. Um, Ashad Rosh, Ashatho Rosh, Ishudo Temarazo Ashad. So it's a lot easier, and that is the first letter of each one of those words. A R A R I T A Ararita. And that means that word that I just said before, Ararita, is one is his beginning, one is his individuality, and his permutation is one. That's what that means. Is that not beautiful? Ararita. Ararita. I just, I love, I love singing. I sing my words. I, I vibrate, but I sing to my angels. I like to sing to my angels. I like to sing, period. And you don't have to sing to your angels. You can vibrate the word however your little heart desires. Everybody does, everybody does it different. Everybody. I promise you, Joe Schmo next to me is not going to say it the way I do, Okay. Linda next to me is not going to say it the way I do. Nobody is going to say it the way you do. Do not compare yourself to nobody. That's another thing. And I see it. And I say it over and over. High magic is so individualized. Because our souls are so different. You are awakening your different spheres within you. Who you are. When I did this work, I awakened. And I'm still awakening well, I've awakened them. But anyways, the this is, I've awakened, you know, because I'm so different than you. You know, I'm a, I'm a Scorpio sun, Libra moon, you know, Sagittarius rising. You know what I'm saying? What are you? Even if you're a Scorpio, 
you might be Scorpio and with a moon sign. So, you know what I'm saying? So we are all so individually different, you know? All so individually different. And that's why I cannot. And comparison is a thief of joy. Do not compare yourself to nobody. That's like me. I could be comparing myself to people with like lots of money because Lord knows I'm not going to lie. I want more money. I don't have, we don't have a lot of money. Sure. But do I compare myself to other people? Oh, no, 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 no. Do I want what other people have? Mm -mm, I don't. I do not. I'm very, very grateful for what I have. Very. God, my hair is getting long. Yeah. I'm very grateful for what I have. Um, I don't, I don't need big fancy vacations or lots of money or big fancy dinners or big fancy car to make me happy. I don't. I am so happy. Like you, like I don't need all that. There's nothing in this world that could give me the happiness that I have. Nothing. No, nothing material. Nothing. No vacation. No vehicle. No high heel shoes. Nothing. You know, my happiness comes from source, from Papa God, okay? And this drain comes down to me, dwindles on down through my high magic, you know? But I pump tons, and I've said this on, I made a little short video because I just, I get, sometimes I have to express how amazing this is, you know? And I pump tons of a chi and a prana, whatever y'all want to call it, and a source energy into my body every day, almost every day. And, uh, you know, and you don't have to do this work every day. And I hear people say, oh, I do this every day for a year. And you don't have to. This is a good thing. Don't listen to that. You don't have to do that. I promise you. Do it when you can. Some people have lives, okay? I have a life. I have children to raise. I have a husband to raise. Literally, children to raise. I'm just kidding. He's not a child. He's a man. He's all man. But, you know, I have a life. How can I just do this? I cannot. There's no way I could do the solar hexagram every day for a year. There's no way. And that's why God brought me to do this because he wants y'all to know. Don't listen to all that, dude. I'm sorry. You do not have to do the work like that. You do not. That will make you, it's going to make you wear out. And then you're going to be miserable and you're not going to want to do it. You know, when you're doing it right, correctly, you don't have to do it like that. And I'm just saying solar hexagram you know do it once a week on a sunday not every day it's about balance y'all and i think god wants us to balance and enjoy our lives and not just focus magic 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 okay it's not it's a balance on everything you know and every aspect so do not and when you hear these people and it just frustrates me you know, oh, I haven't missed a day of temple in nine months. Oh, I did the solar hexagram every day for you. Okay, well, you were probably, and I'm going to be honest, you were probably doing this when you were locked up in prison, and did you have kids to raise? This is my question. You know what I'm saying? Did you have a life? Because I have kids to raise. So you cannot go listen to what these people tell you. This is individualized. <clears throat> High magic is very individualized. Do you, okay? Do not listen. Don't even... Take what I say with a grain of salt, you know, because once you start doing no, no, what I say is not always correct, you know, but I feel like what I am telling you, I, I feel like wholeheartedly what I am telling you is correct. But I'm just saying, you know, you don't have to take, you don't have to take me like I know everything because I don't, you know, there's things that I don't, there's a lot of things I don't know, things that I don't want to know, you know, but I will never ever, and I don't care after 20 years of doing this work, I've only been doing this a little over two years, even after 20, I'm still not going to ever claim that I know everything, you know, and that's, and the, a magician will tell you after 20 years, they'll, they don't know everything, and they'll tell you, you know, we're very humble people, um, but, you know, this work is very individualized, and I just can't stress it enough, all right, and don't let, don't get stressed out about, oh, I don't think I'm doing these rituals enough, and let me tell you something as long as you're doing something daily something it counts and those little somethings will add up in the end and then you'll get it's you're building habits is what you're doing you're reprogramming yourself into a, a, a good way of living a proper way of living I, I'm I prefer this way of living over the worldly living let me tell you my life goes a lot smoother a lot smoother and I'm 10 times happier. Um, I don't have to drink alcohol anymore I don't even I don't eat sugar um, that's me though that's just me. Um, that's just me. Uh, but, um, you know, like I said again, 
um, my everything comes from source. My energy, you know, I don't take melatonin anymore. I don't. Um, you know, I did. I I do the shroomies occasionally, um, but that was a uh, that's occasional. You know, what I'm saying that's more of a spiritual retreat type thing. Um, you know what I'm saying? Because everything is moderation. You know, and I've said it. Yes, I do use marijuana uh, medicinally. Um, spiritually but moderately too you know i don't go rolling up or nothing i smoke out of my pipe or i hit my bong and i'm very moderate with it you know it's expensive it's um the government of course is it's kind of illegal or whatever and so it's very expensive and so of course i can't afford to smoke it like I, I want but i get it like i need and and you know and one day i won't have to pay so much for it you know and one day i will get it legally and i won't have to pay all that money for it and my medicine will be cheaper you know, but I, just because I don't choose pharmaceuticals, you know, uh, you know, I have to pay a lot of money. So I, I will, and I'll never take pharmaceuticals. I don't even take ibuprofen, and I will not take ibuprofen. I refuse. Um, none of that. I don't want any of that worldly sh crap. You know, it just tears your stomach up and kills you. And I don't, that's why I don't do the sugar or the gluten and all that. Cause it's just there to kill you sooner. And I'm trying to live, dude, I'm trying to live for a long time. I don't know what God's plans are, but I'm trying to live for a really long time because I've got a lot of work to do here on this earth. So, you know, um, that's my plan, Stan. Anyways, I'm going to shut up. Um, so let's go on and let's start. Let me get a drink real quick. And these are great. Um, I do one of those a day. I try to skip breakfast. I've talked about that before. Anyway, so the hexagram ritual. So this is, <clears throat> like I said, um, you're working on a different level. And I'm not going to go into what a bunch of books and stuff say. I'm just going to tell you what it's done for me. It opened up a whole new, um, a, a whole new gateway, a whole new doorway into my magic. So if you want to progress, this is definitely necessary. You know, and this is one of your more basic. And now you do have um, the single um, hexagram rituals, which I don't really, um, not yet. I haven't really worked with those too much. Um, I, but I went on to the greater hexagram ritual. Sometimes I always keep kiss in mind, keep it simple, stupid, because some things are unnecessary in life. And um, I totally, you pick and choose your battles. And so some things I think are unnecessary. And that's just for me, that, that something else might be for you. So, but there are the greater hexagram rituals as well, but we're going to start, and this is what I'm teaching y'all, is just the lesser invoking or banishing ritual of the hexagram. And this is something that you will do um, in the morning and in the evening, or you can do them both in the morning. Sometimes I'll do, um, so I'll do with the LBRP, the uh, banishing ritual of the pentagram. And then what I do is I come behind that and I do the invoking ritual of the hexagram. And then usually with that, I'll do uh, the Rose Cross ritual after that. And then I'll do the Metal Pillar and then come back and back it up with another LBRP and then close it out with uh, the LBRH, the Banishing Ritual, the Hexagram. Um, but, you know, you can do it in any order you want. And you're going to experiment. As a magician, you will experiment and change it around and do things different, you know, because sometimes if I don't feel like I'm going to want to do magic later on in the day that I'm going to want to focus on getting some sun or focus on something else because I've done, already done several hours of magic in the morning, let's just get it uh, done and over with. That way I can have the rest of the day to get my, my to take care of my life, uh, my worldly things. Because, yes, I still have to live in, in the world because I have kids and so yeah, it's a balance. Um, so, you know, sometimes I'll go ahead and do, um, an LBRP and a LIRH and then a LB, uh, LBRH right after it. So like I said, you know, work with them, you know, work with them, but usually it's a LIRH and then I'll do the LB, I'll, I'll banish it later, you know, but like I said, if I have to do them back to back in the morning, I do, you know, um, with the greater hexagram ritual, I'll do those back to back invoking banishing. Sometimes, sometimes I do invoking. Very rarely do I invoke and then banish later on with the greater hexagram ritual. I try to invoke and banish and get that done. But what you're doing is you're not only working at, with the micro microcosm. Okay. But you're working within yourself as well. So when, like I said, when you are doing the pentagram rituals, you are separating and purifying your consciousness. It's the same thing with the hexagram ritual, except it's a more detailed, fine-tuned separation and purification. 
And if you know anything about alchemy and, uh, you know, turning uh, plants into oils, etc., you know, alchemy, then, um, then you'll understand more because that's what this is. This is spiritual alchemy is what this is. This is spiritual alchemy. And, um, and I will say, you know, and I'll be completely honest because I'm honest, Robin, the, um, marijuana has helped me help to the healing process, you know, um, because I have, so when, before I started this work, I was a very heavy drinker. And then when I first, a very heavy drinker, and I know that God put that in my life to purify me too, because if you look into alchemy, um, you use alcohol <laughs> and it's so funny. I was like, ah, that little shit he was purifying me and I didn't even know it you know because I was drinking alcohol for five years uh before he brought this work into into my life and um so um but yeah so what you're doing is you're separating and purifying and you don't have to quit drinking do if you're a drinker it's okay I'm not saying that because it might you might be needed you know what I'm saying God might be spirit might be working on you and might be purifying you with the alcohol so I'm saying if you're a drinker I mean on the I'm not telling you to quit drinking. Please do not think that I'm telling you to do that, okay? And nor am I telling you, I yes, I used to say that alcohol is bad. But the alcohol is a necessity, and I will say that for some things. And you can, yes, it does do damage, but you can heal yourself afterwards. So that the damage is repairable. That's all I can say, and that's a thousand percent truth. Alcohol damage and liver damage is repairable a thousand percent, okay? So... I, I have to tell y'all that too. And I just realized that through some studying that I've been doing is that Papa God was using the alcohol to purify me. And I didn't know that. And so I can't be so down on alcohol and stuff because it helped me. And I even said in my previous videos, I know it was a necessity. And it was. And now I know that that was my, he was using that. And if you look into alchemy and how you extract, you can extract souls from plants. And stuff, how you extract the souls and the oils from the plant is through alcohol and you're purifying it and bringing it into it so that's what he did to me i didn't even know that but i that's i'm glad i spoke up on that so y'all know I, I try to tell y'all things as i um as i find these things out and learn them um so my marijuana has been a big um help for me and helped me quit drinking and helped me and uh, helped mend and um, repair my dna and I'm a big advocate um, for medical marijuana, not for everybody. I don't believe that everybody needs to be smoking. I believe that people, it's a, if they need it. And that's the thing is um, so many people just do things without needing them. Like, you know, buying things. And they don't actually think, oh, do I need that? You know, they just, it's impulse buying. You know, but since when I started doing this work, <coughs> um, it makes you smarter. You know, I don't buy the things that I used to. I used to, man, I could spend money so quick. And then I'd be like, oh, a, few, a week later, I'm like, damn, where'd all my money go, dude? And then I have all this crap. And I'm like, that, I don't even buy that. But now, when I buy things, I I buy with purpose. I buy with meaning. Um, I have so much more to show for my money nowadays than I did before. I just... The decisions, that's what I'm saying. When you're doing this work, you're separating and you're purifying and you're bringing it back together. So everything, your decision-making, everything is affected. Everything. But in a good way. Now, now, I've said it before. The only negative effects that I've had from... Well, that was a couple. Uh, from... It's sometimes I do. I get... I hurt a lot for humanity. Um, but I'm very, my stomach's real sensitive, so I can't eat what y'all can eat. I can't eat the gluten and the sugar and all that anymore. I can only eat, like, fruits and vegetables and some meats. Um, I, even then, I have to be careful with what I eat. If, if my stomach, if I eat a few more bites than what my stomach is uh, allow, want, allowing me to have, she'll seize up on me, and I'll be sick for fucking hours. Excuse my language. Um, she hurts me. Because she's teaching me a lesson because I ate a little bit too much. And, and that's, and it happens. It happens because our bodies, what we're doing is we're, through this work, you're awakening your body. Dude, your bodies become smarter. They become intelligent live beings is what is it. Your body, I, that's how I feel, you know. Um, just every part of me, my cells are alive and they're conscious and they're smarter. 
on all levels because every cell in our body is alive. And so when you're putting these toxins into it, the alcohol and the um, the sugar and stuff, you're making, you're causing your cells chaos and they're not happy. So they're going to their cells and they're telling their buddies, hey, she's eating this crap. She keeps drinking this crap. Mm, let's cause havoc here. Let's cause, ha you know what I'm saying? So you'll notice sicknesses. You'll notice depression. You'll notice irritability, um, hatefulness and stuff like that because your cells are working against you. Your body is. Your spirits around you too are working against you. <laughs> so it's like a double whammy, you know, and I see that with, um, they're very, I see that all the time. I'm not going to speak up too much on it, um, because I don't gossip, but, uh, It's a real thing. Your body, your cells are alive. And you either speak life or you speak death, pretty much. And uh, hate and fear is death. You speak, speaking ill on somebody is a bad thing. You are putting, um, putting bad juju on there. We should never talk bad about anybody. We should never really talk about anybody, period. Um, ever. You know, mind your business. Um, worry about you. You know, that's me. I don't speak on nobody. I don't, I, I don't even care. I'm not even going to speak good on them. I, I'm, yeah, I love them. They're good people. But, oh, well, they're, they're over there doing this. And I don't do that ever, ever. And I don't ever talk about nobody ever except for my husband on Facebook. And I said I wanted to kill him. And they shut me out for seven days. But this is the thing, because I jokingly say I want to kill or, like, stab somebody's eye out or slit a throat. But it, jokingly. And I know you get it. Okay? And it's usually about that time of the month. And I would never do that. I wouldn't harm a fly. I promise you, flies are my friends. They're my angels. You know, flies are spies. And so, um, but, you know, Facebook is apparently real sensitive. So, and I get it. Because I have to learn to watch my mouth. Because if I ever wanted to be a public figure, I can't go into public and say I want to slip my husband's throat <laughs> you know that's not very nice and because I don't mean it and that's another thing is we shouldn't say things if we don't mean them you know so I'm learning y'all I'm a work in progress too I'm not perfect and that's what I'm saying it's little things like that I'm still working on me you know so Facebook shut me off for seven days and I get it and that was fine you know and I um and I you know but you know we all make mistakes right and it's baby steps um so, um, I want to, uh, let's get on to the hexagram ritual, y'all. Okay, so with the hexagram ritual, you're going to start out with the QC. All right. All right. So, I think everybody knows how to do the QC. <clears throat> All right. And then you're going to follow through the hexagram ritual, just like you would the pentagram ritual. All right. But remember, I'm going to stand up and remember, we start out in the east. Okay. Hello. There we go. Excuse me, y'all. We start out in the east with the QC, okay? Ato Malkut Vega Bora Vega Dula Leolam. Amen. All right. Now, instead of drawing a pentagram, we're going to draw the fire symbol. Okay. And so, when you invoke, you're going to draw it to, uh, clockwise. Okay. And when you banish, you're going to draw it reverse clockwise, okay? So that's simple. Invoke clockwise, vanish is counterclockwise, all right? We're starting in the east with fire. I always picture red triangles on top of each other. And so remember, I'm invoking. So I'm gonna draw it clockwise, all right? And it's two triangles on top of each other, all right? Ararita. That's the only word you say. Ara Rita. And then charge it. Sign of silence. 
that's it. And you move to the south, okay? But instead of the south being what? Fire, south is now earth, okay? And it's just gonna be the star David, okay? Just like you, it's just an earth. Star David, green, all right? And again, clockwise for invocation, counterclockwise for banishing, okay? So we're just gonna draw the Star of David. That's it. And I do mine in twos. I do Ara Rita for each triangle. You see what I'm saying? I break that word up into twos. Ara Rita, okay? <clears throat> Ara Rita. Then charge it. Mm -hmm. Sign of silence. Pretty easy, right? And then we just go on back to the west. All right. But the west is air instead of water. It's air now and yellow. And so see if y'all can see this. Can you see that? It's just two triangles on top of each other. Okay. And I'm going to be doing invocation. So I'm going to be clockwise. Okay. With each one. And so like now when you do air and you do Aura Rita. So you start from the bottom. You see Aura Rita. Okay. And also, if you're having, you know, well, it's hard to see that. But in the Golden Dawn Magic book, it explains it in there. It's super simple and it explains it. But you're going to do Aura. Now, that would be clockwise. Uh, okay. But Aura. Rita. Get it? Aura. Rita. And then you charge it, and then the side of silence. Okay, I'm gonna do it one more time so y'all can see. Aura Rita. Then you're gonna bring it on to the north. All right, this is water. Right? Usually it's earth, but it's water. You're doing the hexagram ritual, remember? Because you are the sun moving through the constellations. Okay? Water is going to look like this. Okay? Now with the water, this is the only one where you start on the bottom triangle. Remember, clockwise. Aura. And then you're going to go Rita. Aura Rita for invocation. Okay. So from banishing, you'll start at the bottom again, but you'll go counterclockwise. Aura Rita. Get it? All right. And I will go back over those and show you uh, the proper way to draw those. Aura Rita. And then you finish with the LVX. Okay. Now I did do a video on the LVX. Um, so I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to go through that again. Um, I thought I was going to, but um, I just don't feel like it's necessary. Um, but I am gonna go through these one more time. So remember, you start in the east with fire, okay? Now to invoke, Aura Rita, okay? When you banish, Aura Rita. Right. 
And then when you turn to the south, it's Earth. Okay, and it's Aura Rita for invocation. Okay. Of course, banishing you would start. Go counterclockwise. Aura Rita. And then you move on to West Air. Remember I showed you this one earlier. Aura Rita for invoking. For banishing would be Aura Rita. Sorry, my drawing's a little crooked. And then Finally, the north water. Remember, we went over this one already. And this is the only one that you start at the on the bottom triangle. Aura, Rita. Clockwise for invoking. Counterclockwise for vanishing. Aura, Rita. All right. So I hope that helps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and, and go through the ritual and show y'all how I do it. I'm gonna go through everything. I'm gonna do it. I am gonna do the LVX. Show y'all. I'm just gonna go through it, okay? And that way y'all have, y'all can use this. You can watch this video and y'all can um, copy it, all right? <clears throat> all right, y'all. And I'm going to do a, the invocation, the L-I-R-H, Lester Invoking Ritual of the Hexagram. Today is June 21st, 2022. 8.45 a.m. Atul! Malkut Vegabora Vegadula Leolam Amen Aura Rita Aura Rita Aura Rita Aura Rita I N R I N R I Y O N N I N R I S H Y O N Virgo Isis Mighty Mother Scorpio Apophis Destroyer Soul Osiris Slain and risen, e -I -O. the sign of Osiris slain, the sign of the morning Isis, the sign of Typhon and Apophis, 
the sign of Osiris risen. L V X Luke's the light of the cross. May the divine light descend upon me. <clears throat> That's it. So like I said, if y'all have any questions, um, feel free to email me and I will reach out. But I think y'all got this. It's a pretty simple, simple ritual. The main process is just getting... Um, <clears throat> Getting it in your head that the quadrants are different and the symbols are different. Other than that, you got this. All right. I love y'all, my angels. And I'll be back soon, all right? Probably next week. It is summertime, so I'm trying to take it easy. I love y'all. Have a blessed day. Bye.